Hi, this is, uh, well, it's me again. <laughs> uh, well, today we're going to talk about genetic diagnosis. I already talked about genetic diagnosis before, and I lectured about that earlier, the different types of gene therapy. Then here, let's talk about um, one of my favorite things about uh, genetics, genetics in medicine, actually. This is called indirect genetic diagnosis. And one thing we have to keep in consideration about genetic diagnosis is that the principle, basically, what it's trying to say is that uh, it's the linkage of an it's the linkage analysis used to determine if the parent who has a mutation did transmit this to the child. As we see, we have a father, a mother, and the different types of offspring. Father has carries, uh, uh, which is a um, homozygous dominant, capital A, capital A. Mother carries homozygous recessive, lower A, lower B, and the children, um, due to um, Punnett's square. Um, we observe different, um, you know, we have heterozygous dominant, heterozygous dominant, we have heterozygous recessive, or, um, you know, a mixture of that. So, the first thing we have to consider is that, first, random segregation of alleles are linked to the loci, right? The individual 2A, as we observe here, is doubly heterozygous and produces a sperm type capital AB, capital A lowercase b, lowercase a capital B, and uh, homozygous recessive which is a cap lowercase a, lowercase b. And each of these represent offspring resulting in non-recombinant uh, parental, which is non-recombinant, which is parental, and recombinant offspring. The second thing we have to remember is complete linkage between pair of loci, right? So let's talk about this, let's observe this one over here. All right, so one thing we observe here is one, with two a, uh, two one is heterozygous, right? And, um, and at two loci, this partner is doubly homozygous. So when you have each offspring in generations two gets an a, a lowercase a lowercase b from the mother, right? From the mother, and also a capital A capital B, which is homozygous dominant from the or lowercase a b from the father. None gets recombinant a or b or a or b, right? So we observe that. We observe this in the offspring. You see that? And uh, we observe what one thing we have to take into consideration is the use of odds ratio. So I'm going to show you guys odds ratio. That's odds ratio. So basically, what odds ratio is t shows, it's one over one over what? Wait, yeah, one minus zero over n zero squared over zero r over one half n plus t, right? And um, n is the number of recombinant offspring. N is the number of recombinant offspring. R is the number of recomb R is the number of re recombinant offspring. Recombinant offspring, I mean. N plus R is the total number of offspring, right? So that's the thing here. And when we utilize this, and when we observe this in the graph scale, we see a pedigree of Marfan syndrome. Like, you know, an example of, uh, of is an example of uh, the transmission of this is Marfan syndrome. If you guys don't know what Marfan syndrome is, it's when you are when you have affected father in generation one, he will transmit a, tra a disease causing mutation to the daughter. Right, this is called a Y-link transmission. He also transmits allele three from marker polymorphism. This will then uh, allow the scientists or you know doctors to establish linkage analysis uh, and then phase in the family. So we can observe and predict what the offspring from generation 3 will have and what he will she uh, will manifest this kind of allele from the mother. And then we'll have disease-causing mutation, right? So due to the dosage linkage of markers and disease, we can observe this. And uh, the risk of each child will be near to either 100% or 0%. This is what we call complete combination, complete um, transmission. Either it's completely 100% or completely nothing. There's no in-between. The dis we have disadvantages and advantages of these kinds of things. We, the advantage of um, analysis of uh, indirect diagnosis is the disease-causing mutation do not need to be identified, right? We need to identify only linked marker polymorphism. Second is indirect diagnosis, especially useful when there are many possible diseases um, causing mutations at a, at a particular locus, okay? Rendering the direct identification of each possible mutation relatively closely, co costly, and time-consuming. So those are the different uh, advantages of uh, indirect analysis. But we have disadvantages. The disadvantages are three. There are small possibility of recombination, thus we have incorrect diagnosis. Second one is multiply family members 
um, multiple family members must be typed to perform the diagnosis, right? Third, we have the DNA chips. So the thing is that, you know, we have to have complete family history. So those are the things regarding um, the indirect diagnosis analysis. And this is what we used in genetic counseling. Um, uh, we observed this in, uh, particularly for parents that are, you know, op opportunistic on having children and uh, want to make sure that they don't have uh, any chances of uh, abnormal growth for the child, transmission of a disease that either mother or father has or um, a relative has down the line or up the line. So that's um, interesting. So that's basically what I'm going to talk about today, indirect genetic diagnosis. And, we'll, and then maybe next time we'll do another lecture. Thanks, guys.